Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rock Studios. I'm Stan Miller. I'm PR and Analyst Relations Manager for Rockwell Automation in the EMEA region. And I'm joined today by Marcin Shapanik. He is the Head of Information and Data Security at EET Fuels. Marcin, welcome to the studio. Nice to meet you all. And I'm also joined by Dave White. He is the OT Security Lead for EET Fuels. Dave, great to see you. Likewise, Stan. So gentlemen, today we're here to talk about how to get board level buy-in for OT cybersecurity. Great topic, but before we get into it, Marcin, could I ask you to tell us a little bit about EET Fuels? Absolutely, so EET Fuels is actually a trading name for the company called SR Oil. So we are a group uh, owning quite a few organizations, but the main focus of, of EET Fuels is the oil refiner. Okay, and we are basically responsible for uh, major airports in UK providing jet fuel to them. But also we provide petrol and diesel to local petrol stations in, in the entire Northwest. So if you go to a local petrol station to fill your car, it's very, very likely that the petrol itself came from our site. Excellent context. Thank you for that, Marcin. So let's get into the topic at hand. In your experience, when talking with board level executives, how much awareness do they typically have regarding OT security issues? So I would say, first of all, the building that awareness and maintaining that awareness is, is your job as a CISO. And that awareness will be based on two contributing factors, industry that you are in and the culture within the business. So we are in the industry of oil refining and oil refiners tends to be a little bit behind in the OT security. And that's not because we don't really want to invest in that faith. It's because the complexity of all the changes that we need to deliver in order to achieve that. So from my past experience from automotive industry, for example, it's relatively easier to perform those changes in the automotive industry than it is in the oil refiner. Another key aspect here is the organization culture. Organization culture is based on your board. So you need to look at your board members, who they are, what they're interested in, and find a way of getting them engaged in your discussions. So from my experience, what I, what I have uh, tried to accomplish is have a good relationship with CIO because they are playing key part in any technological advancement of your organization, but don't be fully guided by them on everything. Because as far as IT is concerned, it's quite modern and quite attractive, OT is not always as attractive. Another key stakeholder would be chief operating officers. They are usually concerned about safety and efficiency of your operations. So they will be interested in your making progress in that space. Uh, and two other key stakeholders that, you know, the, the awareness depends on is your risk officer or assurance officers. They are concerned about your compliance, you know, risk management. Are you following all the rules? So you need to convince them to be with you on that journey. And finally, probably the most challenging one is the chief financial officer. So they give you the budget. And as far as they are concerned, they can usually tell that the hardware used on your operational layer has been used for 30 years and it was fine. So where is the agency to invest now? So you need to get them on that jet. That's a really interesting breakdown of the different personas uh, that you need to engage with. I'd love to follow that up with, I mean, what have you found is the best way to begin these discussions with them on this topic? So when you are a CISO for any organization, the, the main challenge you have is that you hardly ever have time to actually present yourself to the board. So you need to be wise in how you use that time. So in order for them to commit to your project or your, your way of thinking, you need to demonstrate that you invested your own time into that product. So what I have been doing over the last few years is engaging with regulators, uh, several government agencies giving me that intelligence of what's happening within the industry. Uh, I've been engaging with various cybersecurity communities, again, to gather that intelligence, what others are doing, what can possibly go wrong, what is required to change that posture of your organization. Once you gain that intelligence, you then need to convert it in a format that board members would understand. Because the last thing they want to do is learn another format from you. They don't really have time for that. And the most important thing is keep it consistent. So things don't change overnight. Your situation as it is today, it's likely to be very similar the month after. So you take them on that journey and you give them that idea of how long that journey will take, but it's not going to change overnight. 
Uh, that sets me up great for my for my next question. And the, how long would you say it typically takes to start using OT security functions once these conversations have taken place? So this question is probably based on the others too, to be honest, because based on the assumption that you've established that awareness, based on the assumption that you have that relationship with all the key stakeholders, it can take between two to three years to actually create the OT security function in your business. And that takes a lot of effort, a lot of planning, but also persuading your senior stakeholders that this is worth doing. And one challenge that I find uh, generally across various industries is the consistency. So if you look at some statistics, CISO positions tend to stay in that role for about 18 months to three years. And it can take three years to establish the whole function. So once the, well, if the people change too often in that position, you don't maintain that consistency. So my advice is stay consistent, don't give up and deliver your strategy. And at the same time, you could say both members can change. I agree with this. That happens across various organizations, but it is very, very unlikely that all board members would change at the same time. So you always maintain that culture. You always maintain that progress within the board members and they will appreciate your consistency. Two and three years, as I mentioned earlier, is just to establish the function. It can take another three years to actually deliver the problem. Now, speaking of establishing the function, I'd love to switch over to Dave. Dave, once that function has been established, what are the key next steps that need to be taken? We need to define what the, uh, the requirements of the regulators is, the requirements of the business. Uh, we, need to, we need to work out what we can do for the budgets we have. So we, the first thing we should do is a risk analysis on the plant. Risk analysis will show us what the opportunities are and the risks. We need to turn them into projects. Once we've defined the projects and then we define the suppliers we're going to use, we can then get costing. Let's go to the board, teach step and tell the board, this step's going to cost this much, this step's going to cost this much. And then we've got to get approval each, each step of the line. Once we have that all in place, the project can start. So the, the part where the suppliers comes in, that is a very, I mean, for anybody who hasn't done this before, uh, for, for me personally, the, this, this is the first time I've done an OT SOC, uh, uh, architecting it, procuring it and delivering it. It's, uh, it's a very, very lengthy process. It's nothing to be taken lightly. I, rec I recommend you do a ton of research as I've done and Martin has done. And we've got to the point now we're nearly three years in and we're just about to start delivering. So it's took us this time to actually, as Martin said, to build a team, train people and actually work out what we actually need and what the company needs and to get approvals. So nearly three years to get started. So if we'd done this again, we, and we've learned so much over the past three years, we could do it probably in half the time. Interesting. So Dave, you've touched on this, but let's dig a little bit deeper. What are some of the challenges, the reoccurring challenges that you must deal with when designing and building a SOC or a security operations center, I believe it's called? It's one thing which people talk about a lot is staff retention, okay? Uh, in these short time, we've been doing this nearly three years, we've had so many staff come and go. And these are, these are, these are people we've trained up, we, we've invested time and money into training these guys. And they've left because they've, you know, they've had better offers or whatever, or we've not provided what they want, whatever. But staff retention is the, is the biggest killer for a project like this. I'm currently going through um, rehiring more people. So I've got to retrain these people, get them to jump on, on our project with us. But again, it's just it's setbacks and setbacks. Another challenge is dealing with the board from uh, an understanding point of view. So the board are very supportive if you explain to them uh, what it is you're looking for and what you need and what your requirements and how it's going to help the business moving forward and how it's going to help the business make more profits. The board are very understanding. So we need to provide the board with a roadmap and a high level plan of this is where we need to go. This is where we are now. This is what we, is required. And that's been a challenge because it's back into. And as Martin said before about the board's time and the CISO's time, it's very valuable. So much so we could go to the board one month with a plan 
and they'd say, yeah, okay, come back to us. And then when you go back the next month, they forgot totally what we talked about. So you're constantly going back saying the same things, same things. And that's just the nature of the game. And so that's, that, they're two of the main challenges uh, we faced amongst many others, but they're the two of the main, main ones. Dave, that is so interesting because both of those, of what you described are, are, are human related, right? You're talking about workforce and navigating some of the workforce and talent retention. And then you're also talking about the, that human element of the communication and transparency and, and, um, and consistent communication with the board. So I, I think that's really interesting that there's this human element that's really critical versus you know what one might assume that it might be a technology thing, but really it's, there, there's a human element that's critical there. The human element is always, is always, it always comes down to that at the end of the day. Let me ask you the last question, and that would be, what does the end of the journey look like? Or is there even an end to the journey? Or is this something that co requires a constant evolution, updates or, or refinements? What's, what's your perspective on that? Okay, I've never thought about this, but the, um, the end of the journey, I don't think there ever will be. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a work in progress constantly. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be milestones we need to hit, um, KPIs we need to uh, report on. But I think once we get to a position where we've got a, a mechanism to be able to record our progress and report that back to the board, I believe from that point onwards, we could class the project as a success. So that might be a year, a year and a half into the project. But once we, we, we start give, uh, providing these deliverables to the board and the board can see we're actually doing something, I believe we will gain more support and it'll just be an ongoing, ongoing cycle. Fantastic. Martin, Dave, thank you so much for sharing your perspective, your expertise, and your knowledge on, on your journey uh, in your OT security and building out OT security. It's been a really enlightening discussion. So thank you both for joining us in the studio today. Thank you, Stan. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about industrial automation, digital transformation, and cybersecurity, visit rockwallautomation.com.